بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. In the last episode we talked about what you remember? Yes. We talked about the virtues of giving da'wah to others, and we referred to. A beautiful ayah. Let's listen to it again, just to refresh your memories, and then we talk, take off. So, brothers and sisters, answering this call, answering the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the call of the Quran to invite others, to reach out to others. Uh, let me start with this question. From where should we start? From where should we start to reach out to others, to convey the message, to give da'wah to others. Now we start working on this applicational part. You know, let's do it now after knowing the virtue, the theory, and now let's go to practice. From where should we start? Who would like to answer? Yes. Yes? I believe that we should start from ourselves first. Good. Good. So we start from ourselves. Yes. Another brother? Our conduct. Good, good conduct. Good conduct. Yes. Great. Another response? What do you think? We start from where? When I want to convey the message to others, to reach out to others, to give da'wah to others. Yes, Brother Omar. I think we should start with the facts of the Quran, with the facts of the world. Uh -huh. The whole creation should have one creator. He good. is Allah. Good, good, good. Okay, brothers. The rest of the brothers, what do you think? Yeah. To know the one who I invite, the uh, age, circumstances, mm -hmm. the level of, kn of knowledge, mm -hmm. to, I can invite him, to be able good. to invite him. Great. These are good answers. I would like to share with you my answer about my, you know, what I think about. In my opinion, we got to start with this. You see it? What do you see? The heart. The heart. The heart. You see the heart. The heart. The heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Am ala qulubin akhthaluha. So we got to start with the heart. Even the Prophet ﷺ told us about, you know, the heart. To start with. Yes. It's a very critical thing. If the heart is good, the whole body will good. If the heart is not good, the whole yep. thing will be not good. Yes. You know, the, as the Prophet, as the Quran told us, actually, as the Quran explained, there are aqfal, locks. What do you see there? Lock, lock, it's locks. You see locks. Yes. Different locks. You know, reflecting different stereotypes, different, uh, you know, preconceptions. 
different prejudgments. Barriers. You know, even among Muslims, he is such and such, he is such and such, he is Wahhabi, he, is, he belongs to this, he is, belongs... Sometimes we judge or we label others based on what they dress, right? Or sometimes from their accent or from the region or the area they belong to. Yes. So we give a level, right? Yes. Yes. So these things have to do with the heart. So we, ha we got to start with the heart. What do I mean by that? First, as Brother yes, Muhammad, said, yes, my Ahmed. Brother Ahmed said, we start with our, our own selves, my heart. I got to cleanse, to purify my heart. Because if you have, you know, if you have goodness, love for others, you will work. You will reach out to others. But if, if you don't care about others, or some might hate others, are they going to reach out to others for goodness? No. So, no. so we have to st I have to start with my own heart yeah. to cleanse it, to purify it, to make it pure and clean, loving goodness, loving goodness for all people. Yes. So I fill it with Iman, with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I, I fill this heart with loving goodness. To be a good example to others. Exactly. Yeah. Also to show good example to others. But if my heart is not good, I'm not going to show that good example to others. This is one side of the coin. The other side, how to win the hearts of others. You see my point, yeah. brothers? Yes. Yeah. yes. Do you see my point, bro brothers and sisters? How can we, after cleansing your heart, how can you win the hearts of others. How can you reach out to others? How can you attract them to listen to you? Yes. Now, let me go to the first part. As I told you, there are locks. Locks. How can I remove these locks? What do I need? Mm. Need what? I need what? Good dealing. Faith. Good dealing. I need Faith. Faith. keys. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. I need some keys to help me yeah. Unlock. unlocking the hearts. Yes. Let's go to the first point. First point is breaking the ice with others or building bridges Bridge. to others. Look at that bridge. Just imagine yourself at you know that side, the right side, and you want to reach the other that side, you see? So you need to to build what? Bridge. A bridge. A bridge. You need to build a strong bridge. Yes. Yeah. You know, some people, their hearts yeah. are like that. You see that rock? Yes. Rocky mountain? Some people, their hearts are harder than that rock. So how, how can we deal with them? So we need hikmah, wisdom, and some tools and skills to draw their attention, to attract them, Engage. and to invite, uh, to invite them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let me go to the second point. The second point is, I would like to share with you here, good first impression. This is the first thing you got to take care of. of. What is the first impression they take? All you make, in other words. So if you don't respect others, what is the impression they can get? They will not See? respect you. If, they, if, if you don't respect time, if you have a meeting, for example, at 8.30, but you get there at 9, what is the impression? Bad impression. Bad impression. Okay. Now let me give you this story. Yeah. A story of Dr. Raymond. Dr. Raymond, as he told me the story, he is the one who told me the story. He was, one day he was sitting in his office in the hospital and he was reading 
the meanings of the Holy Quran. Translation of the meaning of the glorious Quran. A young man came in to his office and took the Quran from him and told him, you are kafir. How can you read the Quran? Just imagine what will be the reaction? What will be the impression? What will be the impression of that non-Muslim, Dr. Raymond? He told me about this story. He said, I hated Islam just after this incident. Because I have, you know, this is like I have no freedom even to read what I like. What is this? I am sitting in my office, reading the translation, and then this person, young man, came and pulled the translation from my hand and says, you are kafir. This will, will make what? Good impression or bad impression? Very bad, bad impression. impression. Very bad one. A very bad yeah. impression, exactly. So we have to be careful about the first impression we leave to others, particularly non-Muslims. And as you see now, we are all, Muslims all, are labeled or you know, at, accused of being terrorists. Because of what? Because of the actions. A handful of, the number of, some. of youth yeah. who yes. did something wrong. So we are all labeled because of that. So we have to give good impression. Dealing with Muslims. Let me tell you this story, but after the break, inshallah. Be proactive. Dr. Haitham Al Haddad teaches us how to take a conscious control over our life, set our goals, and work to achieve them in Islam. Take firm steps towards your future, be positive, and be proactive. Every single Muslim needs to have in order to be an effective person. So proactivity uh, in Islam, how to serve our religion and how to serve uh, our life and our guides through all of this. The proactive person is always motivated. The proactive person always have high ambition. The proactive person, he will not lose his time. He will not waste his time. The proactive person is a generous person. Welcome back to the program. We were talking about the importance of the first impression that you can leave to others, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. Even when we deal with Muslims, what is the first impression that we can leave to them? For example, some Muslims have you know, a bad or a false notion or stereo, kind of stereotyping about the mutawa or the sheikh. And he has a certain perspective or attitude about him. He does not respect or he, did not, he does not take anything from him. So we, ha we, we must know how to deal with others. First, first impression is very important. The other, told, the other story I told you that I will relate to you is that one time I was attending a convention in a big city in one of the Muslim countries. So it was time for Asr prayer. One of the concerned brothers passed by a group of youth and he was shouting at them, pray, pray, pray Asr prayer. If you don't pray, you are kafir, meaning an un-Muslim. And they just were very angry at him. They shouting, just go, go, and saying some bad words against him. So I was, subhanAllah, pondering, thinking, is this the right approach to go to the, those brothers and ask them to, to perform salah? So instead of shouting at them from a distance, 
we were at the first floor and they were in the lobby watching, as I told you, the, the game. So if he went to those brothers, said, Salaamu Alaikum, brothers, Jazakumullah Khair, don't you like to win? Yes, absolutely. I thought you want to win. Sure. Yes. Okay, let's, let's, make, let's make Salah, let's perform Salah and come back. How about that? I will be convicted with that, actually. Sure. I'll be convinced with this idea. Great, great. So we need to, to know how to approach others. And the first good impression is very important. Brothers, if we, as I mentioned before, if we do not respect time, if we deceive others, if we tell lies to others, if we do many bad things, what will be the impression left in the minds of others, particularly in the Muslims. So we must be, you know, good ambassadors for Islam and Muslims. Don't you agree with me? Yes. Yes. Good. Now let me go to another point. What do you see? Smile. A smiling Smile. face. Yes. So this is the second tool or, you know, you can use this strategy in attracting others. A smile, just a sincere smile. Doesn't cost you that much. What do you think, brothers? Yeah. Yes, brothers and sisters there watching us, a smile doesn't take that much. By the way, some studies say that some studies indicate that if you smile, you need Listen to that. You need 13 muscles. But if you frown, you need how many muscles? 47 muscles. So, biologically speaking, physically speaking, which one is easier? To smile or to frown? Smile. 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 To smiling takes what? 13, 13 muscles. Yeah. Frowning takes what? 47 muscles. 47 muscles. And it, when you smile, you get charity. Yeah. Yes. This is the easiest way of getting charities. Yes. Hasanat. Rasulullah said, وَتَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ صَدَقَةً That when you smile in the face of your brother is charity. charity. Alhamdulillah. How many rewards can, you, can we get? through only smiling, only smiling. Just imagine when we smile to others. You relax, you feel comfortable, and the other will feel also what? Comfortable. Let me tell you this story, very quick story. A da'ya from Thailand, a brother from Thailand, told me this story. He said, I met a person from his, you know, from his country. He met him 18 years ago, and he talked with him about Islam. And then after all this time, they met each other. After 18 years, they met each other again. The Da'ya tells me that that person told him, I, for I forgot what you have told me about but the only thing which I do not forget is your smile. <laughs> After 18 years, just imagine my dear brothers and sisters, after 18 years, he forgot all, you know, what he was told about, but the smile, the smile he did not forget. Just keep smiling. The Prophet Sallallahu he was always, as some, you know, stories tell us in the seerah, that he's, he was always smiling, always smiling, cheerful face. So just let's, you know, practice that. Now let's, let's practice this. Now for 20, for 20 seconds, for the brothers here, I would like to see the most beautiful smile here. <laughs> Within 20 seconds, who has the most beautiful smile? <laughs> and I, I hope also the, the viewers will inshallah smile and they can judge who has the most beautiful smile. Let me see. 
Maybe Stad Ahmed Fahmi has the most beautiful smile there. <laughs> okay. So let's keep smiling, brothers. Brothers and sisters, keep smiling. This is, subhanAllah, a great key, a great key for winning hearts. Let me go to the next point. So this is the workshop, the first, you know, workshop I asked you about, the most beautiful smile. Smile for 20 seconds. You judge who has, who has the most beautiful smile. You can practice this, you know, at home with, in, with your family, with your friends. Let's encourage each other to smile. SubhanAllah, I, I see some, some brothers, uh, even sometimes on TV, from the beginning till the end, there is no one smile. SubhanAllah, why? This will not cost you anything, just smile. Let's go to the next slide. Good speech. This is another key to win the hearts of others. Good speech. Rasul says, Al Kalimatu Tayyiba Sadaqa. Good speech, good word is what? Charity. 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 And the Quran beautifully, beautifully tells us. Let's listen to this ayah, beautiful ayah, just three or four words. But a great principle, it is a great principle in dealing with others. It says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا Speak nicely, gently, smoothly to mankind. Listen to this beautiful verse. Isn't it a great principle in dealing with others? Yes, of course. Now we, we go sometimes, you know, and, and learn more about the public speaking skills and communication skills. Listen to this beautiful ayah in the Quran. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا So when you, when you invite others, Muslims or non-Muslims, instead of saying, you, you don't understand? Why don't you do this or do that? Instead of that, you can just take it easy. My dear brother Ahmed, Wallahi, I love goodness for you. I love, inshallah, that all of us will go to Jannah. How about that? Don't you like to go to Jannah? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I would love, inshallah, that all of us will go to Jannah. So why don't we pray? Why don't we pray? What is the relationship between you and God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it a good relationship or a bad relationship? You can ask this question. Instead of just, you know, cursing or saying bad words against him, let's use a good speech. 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 Good word. al kalimatu tayyibah sadaqah. Good word, good speech is charity. This is another, this is another key. Let's go to discover more. Another key, mention benefits. You know the Prophet ﷺ, Rasul Kareem ﷺ, our dear Prophet ﷺ, when he sent convoys to, you remember, to the, to the Roman emperor, to the Roman leaders, and to the Persian leaders, he mentioned just two words. Part of what he, you know, he mentioned, Beautiful two words said, Aslim, Taslim. Aslim, Taslim. So, come to Islam, you will be saved. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So, when we invite others to, to Islam or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ala tuhib al-sa'adah. Don't you like to have happiness? Don't you, don't, you, don't you like to go to Jannah, to paradise? So we can use some benefits. So some benefits we can talk about. Now, in this setting, in this meeting, when I speak with you, brothers, and brothers and sisters there, when I tell you, inshallah, in this program, we will discover more about the secrets, the tools, the skills of winning hearts, how to reach out to others. Don't you like to get more? Yes. Of course. We'd like to discover more about it. So tell them, 
from the beginning about you know some of the benefits that you can gain aslim taslim so we follow the guidance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam great now let me show you this let's 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 go to this part seek the truth so when we when we when we talk with others generally say let's seek the truth seek the truth as jesus said seek the truth and the truth will set you free it then so let's seek the truth the other part is knowledge is power don't you agree with me that knowledge is power yes. so let's discover more about islam let's discover more about the teachings or the beauty of islam knowledge is power so when we when we talk with others particularly non muslims we can ask them something like that let's seek the truth seek the truth and the truth will set you free knowledge is power let's know more about each other rather than what you hear from the media and sometimes the media is you know a biased media they have their own agenda okay so these are some of the keys some of the keys you remember them to have good right. first good first impression sincere smile mention benefits that they can gain from your meeting mm -hmm. or from your you know and creating the bridge exactly inshallah in the next meeting bismillah inshallah we'll discover more about the keys and and secrets of winning hearts thanks for your time wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam